In this tutorial, I'm going to show you two ways in which you might play over or study chess games using the database program SCID. This is a follow-on tutorial to one called Studying Openings with SCID. In that tutorial, I showed how to install SCID and how to download files in PGM format to load into SCID databases. You might ask why study over master level chess games at all. Here's a quote from a recent book called Moonwalking with Einstein, a book on memory techniques. And this cites a psychological study that shows that the best predictor for success in chess is how many grandmaster games one plays over. In the previous tutorial, I gave you some sources for games in PGN format. Here are some more. I suggest if you are interested you stop the video and copy down the URL for these sources for games. The first one here contains many files by player and there are many famous players here and that's a good source for master games. Another source for a lot of games is this one. Uh, this is a file that you might use as your reference database. It contains something like 4.4 million different games, and you can download these things actually in PGN format, Chess Assistant format, or SCID format. If you wish to download it in SCID, you could try that. I can't guarantee that that would work, but you, the PGN format would definitely work. Another source for master level games is this URL. Here we have files in PGM by players, openings, and events. There are many files here. You can see that just about any player that you might be interested in, you could probably find here and download the games. And you can download games by uh, opening as well. A lot of files on this site. Here's another site from chess.com and I selected out short games. It's uh, sometimes more fun to play over short games. It doesn't take you very long, and uh, you can get uh, quite a bit out of them in that you can learn traps and things that you shouldn't do. So let's suppose that you have opened your SCID database that contains some master-level games, and you want to pick one to go over. It's still a question, which one would you pick? Here are some suggestions. If you have a book of annotated games, you might see if those games, or one of the games that you're interested in, is in your SCID reference database. Quite often, if the database is large enough, uh, games that are annotated in books will often be included in your reference database. So that's a good pick. Another way to pick a particular game is to pick one that uses an opening that you're learning. In the previous tutorial I showed you how to study openings using SCID and it's a natural thing to do then to go on and play over that game. Another way to pick a game is to pick games by your favorite player. Uh, you, this could be a historical player or a modern day player if you have their games. And last what you might do is play over games in order uh, by their date. So, for example, you might, say, play games by uh, Morphy, and after a few of those, play games by Steinitz, and continue through all of the world champions in order, and you might get some idea of how the game has changed uh, by the champions over the years. Here I've opened my... Morphe database and arbitrarily selected the first game in that and this was played by Morphe against another Morphe in a blindfold game. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to close the notation window. We're going to play a version of Guess the Move and so you don't want to know what the moves are. So right click on this and close it off. The next thing you want to do is right click on this window at the bottom and there are a bunch of options. You can see here that it tells us 
uh, that Morphe won the game, and it tells us what the next move is, is E4. Well, we don't want to know what the next move is, so we right-click and we get a menu that lets us hide the next move. Now we know that Morphe won this game, Paul Morphe won this game, and we want to play the game from the winner's perspective. White is at the bottom, so we're all set to go. If black had won, we just press the period key to get black at the bottom. And in this case, we'd be guessing black's move, but we want to try and guess white's move. If this game happens to have uh, an opening that you are studying, then you would want to guess the moves in the opening. But let's suppose you're not doing that, and all you want to do is guess moves starting somewhere in the middle game. So you would play through this game by clicking the right arrow key until you get to some position that you are want to start following the game on. Let's suppose it's just that simple. At this point we're going to start guessing White's move. Presumably after some time of study, let's suppose that we thought that the best move for White, or a pretty good move, was Knight captures e5. A window comes up to indicate that we did not make the move in the game. But this is our guess. What we're going to do is we're going to click Try Variation, which will allow the game to proceed using this variation, but does not alter the moves in the game in any way. So if we try Variation, we see that the move that we guessed is now played on the board. What we do now is call up an engine to evaluate this position to see how good our move really was. Here's how you start up a chess engine. Go to Tools. Click on Start Engine 1, and that starts up, for me, an uh, engine called Houdini. Now we'd like this engine window to be to the right of our board, so we open up the menu and we click on Move to Right, and now the engine is to the right of the board. Now when you look at the engine window, what we're going to concentrate on is this evaluation, which is the first number here ignoring the particular moves that the engine is suggesting to achieve this variation. What this is saying is that our white move here with the knight, the engine thinks, is minus 1.7 pawns. The minus sign means that white is at a disadvantage. If it were a plus here, that means that white were, would be at an advantage. So this means that the engine thinks that white is now down almost two pawns. So we would take note of that score, and now we'll get back to the real game by going up here to Edit, unclicking Try Variation, and you can see that we've been put back to the position before we guessed our move, and now we're going to click on the right arrow and make Morphe's move, which is Bishop to C4. The engine is still running, and now the engine says the evaluation is 0.17. The plus means that white has a very, very slight advantage. This contrasts with our guess, which was down almost two pawns. So you would score this move for yourself as a zero, because you didn't do as well as the engine thought, so you get zero points for that guess. Now we might as well stop the engine, because it takes some CPU time, and continue with the game. We're not going to try and guess black's moves, so we'll just hit the arrow key, and that's black's move. Now we're, we need to guess White's move. After some study, let's suppose that we think that Morphe's move was C3. Because the program didn't give us the window indicating that was not the move in the game, we know that this, in fact, is the move that Morphe made. So we would give ourselves one point for having guessed correctly. Now, the engine may think that it's a bad move, but at least our move was as good as Morphe's, and so we're going to give ourselves one point. So the idea is that you get one point if your move is as good as Morphe's, at least, in, as, at least if the engine thinks it's as good, and you get zero points if the engine says that your move is worse than Morphe's. In this way, you can keep a running tally of how you're doing, and at the end, 
get a percentage of the moves you guessed right over the total number of moves you guessed. And you can record that percentage alongside the date. And then as time progresses, you can see if you're getting any better at trying to guess the move that the master chess player made. Now I suggest when you get to the end of the game, if the game does not end in checkmate, as it does not here, but just ends with a resignation, I suggest that you play out the game from white against the engine. After all, if the black player has resigned, you should be able to win this game even against a strong engine. To play out the game against an engine, go over here to play and select Tactical Game, and select Start from the Current Position, and set the engine's level up, uh, I would set it up all the way, and now you can play against the engine. Here it's White's move, so I'm, I'm sorry, it's Black's move, so we'll let the engine uh, play out Black and and we'll play white. So hit play. And the engine has moved the queen to e8. So now you would make your move and now you get no help at all but have to continue to play on your own. So maybe you'd take the queen. I don't know if that's a good move or not but let's suppose that's what you do. And in this way, you continue to play out the game, and you should be able to win a one game. You get no score for winning or losing the one game. Just keep track of the score by tallying up the moves that you guessed correctly and the moves that you blundered on. I should say that you're going to have to pick some kind of uh, evaluation as to how bad your move is. If the engine says it's X and you were only, say, 0.2 or 0.5 pawns worse than the engine move, then you might give yourself full credit. You're going to have to decide what that uh, slack number might be. But I think a half a pawn is not too bad since engines are really not all that precise when you get below a pawn. Now I'm going to show you a second way to play Guess the Move using the SCID database program. It turns out that SCID has thought of this as being a useful thing to do. So what you can do is click on Play, and you can click on Training, and then click on Review Game. Now we've already loaded our game into the window that we're going to review, it's still the first game in the Morphe database. Again, we'd like this window to be right alongside the board, so we click on this menu with the right mouse button, and we say move to right, and now our game review window is next to our board, and it's asking us to enter our move. So we're going to enter our move, and we're going to say that we think Morphe did E4. Well, sure enough, he did. And he's going to analyze our move, and he says we played the same move as in the match. Okay? Now let's suppose we make a move, and we think that White's next move is, say, this. It takes a little while for the engine to evaluate the position, but it says move is not good, minus 0.38, and it shows us the variation. So we can keep a running tally here, depending on whether we think that this score of point, minus point three eight is all that bad. If we think it's a bad move, then we'll give ourselves zero points. We'll give ourselves one point for the first move. And every time that this game review window thinks that our move is okay, we'll give ourselves one point. And we'll do that whether or not we matched the Morphe move or not. Now we get the chance to guess again. And this time, let's suppose we make this move. Again, this takes a while for the engine because it has to evaluate uh, both the real move and, and our guess, and that's why it takes a little bit long. 
But here again, we played the same move as in the match, so we give, our, give ourselves another point. So you might think this is a little bit easier than uh, doing it the first way, but there are some restrictions in that it takes a little bit of time. The engine is evaluating all the moves, or all the positions, rather, and you don't really have to do that if uh, your move matches Morphe's move. So either way, this is how you might play through a master game using the SCID database. I'm going to close the tutorial by suggesting that you're only going to get out of this master level game review depending upon the effort that you put into it. Ideally, you'd look, you'd look at the move not with some sort of a random guess, but by pretending that you're actually playing the game and put as much thought and concentration and time into your evaluation of the position and selection of your move as you would as if you're playing a real game. I've got a resource here that is Dan Heisman's uh, website. Dan Heisman is a well-known instructor and he's written many essays and he, that have been published in Chess Cafe column called The Novice Nook. And in particular, if you look at number one here on thought processes, he goes through what you probably should be thinking of and concentrating on and the kind of effort you really should be making on every move that you make. If you put that kind of effort and understanding into the move before you guess the move when you're playing over a master game, you will indeed improve your game and get a lot out of playing over master level games.